Welcome back to TSO Daily Dose. Today we have probably the most special guest we've yet had on TSO Daily Dose. It's the Tasmanian Premier, Premier Goodfine. Or Gutwin. I... Look, my father would say Goodfine if okay. he were alive, but, um, but uh, Gutwin is how it's been anglicised. <laughs> OK. <clears throat> that was actually an accident because I, I'm so <laughs> used to saying it in my head as Goodfine. Uh, I've, I've spent a little bit of time in Germany and it, it's so natural to me. So your father, was he German or was he...? His family was Austrian uh, okay. and then after the First World War, um, that part of Austria was um, cut off and it became the upper part of Yugoslavia. Oh, wow. So okay. he was born to an Austrian family, but, um, but they lived out of Yugoslavia at that particular time. The borders seem to shift over there every now and then. Yeah, they have, a, they have a little bit of a history of that. Your father came out to Tasmania, did he? They, they were refugees post the, um, the Second World War, my father's family. They actually lived on a train carriage for over 12 months being shunted around Europe. And then uh, as part of the, um, the post-war uh, migration program, his family mm -hmm. moved to England. Okay. Uh, he spent there only about six or seven years in England, um, grew up in his late teens, uh, met and married my mother. I was born in England. In fact, um, by the time my father was 21 and a half uh, and my mother would have just turned 20, they had three children. Wow. And so we came out on the boat in um, uh, 1968 and arrived here in 1969. And so this has been home ever since for you? It has. I was three years old when we left um, Britain, turned four on the boat. Yeah, right. Arrived here as a four-year-old. <laughs> Obviously, uh, Austria has an incredible classical music tradition. Did your parents or your father pass down any sort of uh, Austrian or, or classical music traditions to you? I thought you might ask me that. The, an <laughs> the answer is zero. Yeah, um, okay. yeah. Now, look, when I was young, I learned the violin. Um, I played the piano. Uh, my, one of my sisters played clarinet quite well. I've got a brother that played um, guitar. Uh, it was a school that I picked up was interested in for a short period of time and then, uh, you know, in my early teens, walked away from it. And um, I certainly haven't played a violin for over 30 years. I was going to say, if, if I handed you one now, which, don't worry, I'm not going to, would you would you be able to sort of figure it out? Would the muscle memory sort of be there? Look, it'd be, in fact, I said 30 years. In fact, I'd be, it's over 40 years <laughs> since I picked one up. Um, so, okay. look, I could, I'd know how to hold it, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but no, not much more than that. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, you, do you enjoy listening to violin music or is, it, is that one of the things that sort of, you know, as a teenager, it, it wasn't something that grabbed you by the heart so it was easier to, to take another path? Look, I must admit um, uh, my uh, focus as a teenager was, uh, was mainly sport. My um, foray into music was something that my parents thought would be good for all of their children, but because they thought it would be good for all of their children, it was something that their children pushed back against and <laughs> found other interests. But, uh, but look, I, I listen to a range of music. Um, in the car at the moment, uh, when I'm travelling, many of your listeners, I wonder who I'm talking about, but I listen to a bit of Warren Zevon. Um, okay. I must admit, I, I, I'm not sure who that yeah, is. Yeah, Warren Zevon. I'm, I'm a great meatloaf fan. Oh, okay. I know who Meatloaf is. Uh, but certainly not, not a lot of the classics. Oh, that's okay. Have you had a, a chance, uh, you were obviously not in your time as Premier because we were just discussing, you, you were in the job for eight days before this whole crisis hit, but have you had a chance in your previous ministerial life uh, to come along to the TSO and put your toe in that water? Look, I've attended um, a couple of TSO performances over the years um, but as a MP, but also before that. In fact, um, I was only thinking back last night with this interview on. In fact, one of my most pleasant evenings that I've, um, that I've had in my life was with my wife, um, and interestingly enough, my mother-in-law, uh, in the Gorge in Launceston. Oh, wow. And the TSO played there um, going back, gee, it'd be over 20 years ago now, Definitely I would expect. Definitely before my time. Um, and it was just fantastic in that big na uh, natural amphitheatre, just sensational. You know, people on blankets um, on a beautiful night. It was brilliant. We um, we have a great history with uh, doing uh, the symphony under the stars in Launceston Park, but I imagine the gorge would be s somewhat, you know, an extra level up. And I think I think that might have been the migration from the gorge to the to the park. I think the park was an easier venue to manage than what the gorge was, but. It's very, very popular, uh, the Symphony Under the Stars in Launceston, it is. Yeah, yeah. and, you know, it's, I'm so glad that we got to do it this year before, before the, the whole impending crisis uh, came upon us. Um, let's, let's shift and, and talk about the, the work you've been doing during 
COVID-19, obviously you've got a lot on your plate and you're looking forward to, I, I watched a press conference the other day, you're looking forward to the recovery out of this. What sort of role do you think an organisation like the TSO, an arts organisation that, that really looks out to, to our community and how we can serve them, what, what sort of role do you think we have to play to help in the recovery of Tasmania and, and Tasmanian community are coming out of this? It's an interesting question. Um, I think all, all organisations that um, are outward facing largely as the TSO is um, that connect with Tasmanians and have deep bonds with Tasmanians have a very important role to play. And I think these sorts of podcasts that you're doing are just fantastic. Um, you know, it was described just earlier as you know, bringing a little bit of joy to people's lives early in the morning. And I think that's fantastic. Now, as we move forward, one of the challenges we'll all face is that we're in uncertain times. You know, if you look at what's happening around the world, if you look at what's happening in the state, you know, this virus moves very quickly and it can have devastating effects um, both in terms of people's lives but also in terms of what they do during the day, their, their job and, um, in fact, their, their personal freedoms and liberties. So organisations like this that actually reach out and communicate are important, I think, in terms of the messaging that they provide but also in terms of the belonging that they also provide for people. Um, it's important at times like this that we all understand that we're not alone mm. uh, and that life will go on. Uh, and you know, with the, the history that the TSO has um, in this state, it's been an enduring institution, a valuable um, and vibrant institution for a long period of time. And I think you know, that will continue and it's important that it remains engaged and people remain engaged with it. Yeah, it's where the musicians of the orchestra are, are sort of champing at the bit to get back to, to performing. And obviously we understand that we, we can't have, especially at this time, a hall full of people um, because it's just, it's too dangerous for our patrons. Um, but, you know, I, I, a lot of the a lot of the time, my colleagues come up to me and you go, why, "Why can't we just get the whole orchestra on stage? You know, we've got to keep one one and a half meters distance between us." Um, do you think that the, the social distancing might be able to be relaxed so we could get a full orchestra on stage? Look, I'd I'd like to be more positive about this, but I think um, social distancing will be with us for some time yet. It's our best defence. Um, you know, one of the, the most important things we can do as Tasmanians, and I think that's one of the reasons why we've been so successful, is that people have taken responsibility at a personal level. You know, I, I witness it every now and then, there's a lapse, and you, you, know, you see some individuals perhaps not quite doing what they should do, but in the main, Tasmanians have followed the rules, they've maintained their personal distances, um, they have improved their, their cleanliness and their hygiene, which has been fantastic. Interesting enough, our flu tracker is um, at one of the lowest levels it's ever been at, simply because people have been washing their hands, keeping clean and keeping distance. Um, but in terms of, for the orchestra, in terms of social distancing, unfortunately, until we get to the other side of this, um, it'll be a way of life. And whilst difficult, uh, you know, I've been amazed at just how people have been able to adapt yeah. and to find different ways of doing things. Yeah, I, I think, you know, is it as keen as we are all to get back together, the amazing upshot of it for us as an organisation, and I think many other organisations, is it, it spurred a whole bunch of uh, creative approaches in, in problem solving. It's how, how do we do the thing that we want to do uh, within this new constraint? And I, I think that's a really positive sign. Uh, out of crisis will always be opportunity. Mm. And you know, for organisations like the TSO, for um, small businesses and other industry sectors that we have, uh, some of the ingenious ways that they have been able to creatively continue life moving forward um, has filled me with so much pride, to be honest. Um, you know, some of the, the decisions that we've had to make and some of the imposts that we've had to put on people's freedoms and their liberties have been some of the most difficult decisions mm. that I've ever made. And it, I couldn't be prouder in the way that you know, people have accepted it, um, been responsible, but then at the same time they've looked at how they can continue their life uh, moving forward uh, productively um, and in a way that, um, that assists both uh, themselves, their family, their community and their overall society. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a very good point. And I think we're lucky to have... Uh, we're lucky to have uh, what I would quite openly admit is, uh, I must admit, I, I am of a different political persuasion, but I think your your leadership and, and the, the position that you've been able to take forward uh, instills a lot of confidence in a lot of Tasmanians and we're sort of very happy to have uh, this, this guidance at this time and, and be able to trust 
the path that we're treading together uh, as a community to hopefully come out the other side of this. So, Well, Mitchell, thanks for saying that, because I, this has been well about politics. This has been about life and death, and it's been important um, that you know, all of us have just put, have done what we've needed to do to actually ensure that our community can move forward. And as I've said on so many occasions, I've never been prouder of, um, of a group of people, and by a group of people, I mean Tasmanians in the main, because they have just done what's needed to be done. Uh, they, in the main, they haven't complained, and we've got to a very good spot. Uh, you only have to look, and I've said this in many of my press conferences, um, you know, the, the test of how well we're doing is not necessarily what, what's happening here, but it's when you look over the fence and see what's occurring elsewhere, and you know, some of the challenges that other jurisdictions in this country, and unfortunately the world, facing. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of people that uh, when they turn their eyes to Tasmania, they are very envious of the circumstance we're in at the moment. Absolutely. We're very lucky down here. Well, I, I won't take any more of your time, uh, but thank you so much for coming in today and, and being part of our attempt at uh, reaching out and connecting with the community here and the community abroad, around the world, in fact. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for coming in today and sitting down and having a chat with us. Well, Mitch, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to round out this interview on Daily Dose with another wonderful clip of music. I hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm.